All right. So, first set of privacy, you have these in your notes, I think, but log base A of 1 is 0, log base A of A is 1, log base A of A to the x is x, and if log base A of x equals log base A of y, then x is y. And then the parallel natural log, natural log of 1 is 0, natural log of E is 1, natural log of E to the x is x, natural log, if natural log of x equals natural log of y, then x equals y. Okay, so we have those. Now, um, I just want to go through some examples of these and I want to start with number 26. This is page 378. Number 26 which just asking us to simplify using these properties. So it's log base pi of pi squared. In other words, this is the base. What would the exponent be of this expression? Well, the exponent is there. It's 2. All right? Log base pi of pi squared <coughs> is 2. And then 28. Now, this is an interesting way, but the, a logarithm is the exponent. But it's a log base 5, and this is a base 5 exponential. The log base 5 of 3. These still are canceling out. So 5 to the power of log base 5 of 3 is 3. All right? Um, let's see. Next one. I had here is page 379, number 62. <coughs> now these are the same thing, but number 62, oops, that's not what 62 is. 62 is the natural log of 1 over e squared. Okay, so when, when I rewrite that, I would write natural log of e to the negative second power. All right? So natural log of e to the negative second power, this is log base e, this is e to the negative second power. That's the exponent, negative 2. All right? Number 64, the natural log, we're just simplifying, natural log of e over pi. Now natural log of e, what's that equal? Natural log of e, log base e of e to the first power. Julia? That is 1. So simplified, then that's 1 over pi. Natural log of E is 1. All right? And then 66. E to the natural log of 1 over E. couple ways of going about that. This is e to the power of a natural log exponent. The e and the natural log would cancel out, and that would give us 1 over e. But I do want to let you consider an alternative way of thinking about that. Would you agree that 1 over e is e to the negative first power? So if I take e to the natural log of e to the negative first power, and what's the natural log of e to the negative first power? What's the natural log of e to the negative first power? Natural log e do what? They're canceling each other out. You're getting negative 1. 
So it's an alternative way, but and these are equivalent, right? One over e is equal to e to the negative first. All right. So that's kind of those that group that first group of simplifying things. The um, second group is right here. We get the product property, the quotient property, and the power property. And as you look at that, log base A of u times v, if I take a to the second times a to the third, what do I do to get the simplified version? You add. Okay, this is related to exponentials also. So log base A of u times v. It's log base A of u plus log base A of v. All right? And then the natural logs follow too. This is log base E, right? Natural log of u times v equals natural log of u plus natural log of v. All right? Now, if I take um, a to the seventh divided by a to the second, what do I do to simplify? Subtract. So log base A of u divided by v is log base A of u minus log base A of v. All right? Natural log of u over v is natural log of u minus natural log of v. So we're using that property. And then the power property here, what I like to do is just take that in and put it in front. Then you get n times log base a of u. And we... Okay. So... And then natural log of u to the n is n times the natural log of u. All right? Those are the properties we're using there. Now, let's do some in the book here. I'm on page 385 now. And we're going to just simplify some expressions using those properties. Um, number 16. Page 385, number 16. Now, I'm going to... The instructions say, use the properties of logarithms to write the logarithm in terms of log base 3 of 5 and log base 3 of 7. So we're going to write everything in terms of that. So 16 is log base 3 of 175. If you were to factor log uh, 175, what would you get? Five times five times three. I'll go write that as five squared times three. All right? Now, with the product property, how would I rewrite this? How would I rewrite that? Five Emily? Five, four, five, seven. Oh, seven? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I, that's what you said, too. Wasn't it? Okay. Uh, Thank you. I'm going to do that in the next step, okay? Uh, yeah. Plus log, three. log base 3 of 7. All right. And then Emily was skipping that and using the power property also. I'm going 2 log base 3 of 5 plus log base 3 of 7. So we have followed the instructions. Everything's in terms of log base 3 of 5 and log base 3 of 7. This we put the property on, then we're, we're good there. Okay. All right. The next one, let's do 18. Eighteen. It's so log base three of forty-five over forty-nine. Okay. I'm gonna factor that a little bit. Um, forty-nine is seven squared. How about forty-five? If I factor that. 
down to its primes. Three squared times five. Three squared times five. Okay. Okay, I want to use the quotient property right now. What would that be? How would I rewrite this expression using the quotient property? Ellie? Minus, you say? Log base 3 of 7 squared. Okay. All right. Yes, it is. So now let's rewrite this one with the product property. See what I'm saying? Log base 3 of 3 squared plus log base 3 of 5. I'm going to go ahead and write this one with, how would I rewrite that one? Grace? Um, 2 log base 3 of 7. Yes. Okay. Anybody know what the log base 3 of 3 squared is? Megan? Two. And it's just plain old 2. Okay, so we can have constants in there, but 2 plus log base 3 of 5 minus 2 times log base 3 of 7. So everything is in terms of log base 3 of 5 and log base 3 of 7. All good there? All right, next one I have written down is 22. 22, it says find the exact value of the logarithmic expression without, we're not going to use a calculator. All right, so we're going to go log base 2 of the fourth root of 8. We have to remember some of our rules with radicals here. I'm going to do something here. Log base 2, fourth root. Is everybody good? 8 is a power of 2. It's 2 to the third power. Now, let's remember back to first semester. How can I rewrite that so it has a rational exponent, a fraction <coughs> exponent? Is everybody remembering that? Very good. Very good. So what's the log base 2 of 2 to the 3 fourths equal? 3 fourths. What's the power of 2? That's right there. Okay. That's 22. I have 24 written down here. Log base 3 of negative 27. A 3 to the third power is 27. How am I going to get that negative? Um, okay. I'm restricted. Three's my base. So I can't do anything with that. I want you to look real early in our notes on logarithms yesterday, the restrictions on y equals a to the x, or the log, what is it, y equals log base a of x. Do we have some restrictions there, Julia? This has to be positive. Okay, so this is not defined. Can't take a log of a negative number. All right. Let's look at twenty-eight. That is 2 times the natural, natural log of e to the 6th power minus natural log of e to the 5th power. Several paths we can take here. Any thoughts here? How you would take this on? Okay. 
Okay. So, of the, which property? Quotient. Quotient. Okay. Before you do, I need this two to not be in front of the natural law. So, how about we go the opposite of the power property also? Which means I'm going to put it back up here as the exponent. So, natural log of e to the 12th minus natural log of e to the 5th. I just have to have at natural logs if I'm going to do what you're saying here. So, he says now, okay, Matthias, now that we have it ready, what would that be? The natural log of what? e to the 12th over e to the 5th, which is the natural log, simplify that. What's that? e to the 7th. What's the natural log of e to the 7th? 7. Now, is that the only way to get to that answer? I would, just, I would um, yeah, this is a great way of doing it. Very good. Um, do you know what the natural log of e to the 6th is? 6. What's 2 times 6? What's the natural log of e to the 5th? What's 12 minus 5? Okay, so we got there either way. All good there? 28? All right, let's look at 30. Log base 4 of 2 plus log base 4 of 32. Julia? Okay. All right. I'm... I want to do that second, okay? Um... Oh, you know what? Let's just go with it. I asked, you gave. So, she says this is one half. Do you agree that the square root of four is equal to two, right? And that that is four to the half power. So this is one half. Although this might be a little trickier. We can do it, but I might encourage you to go a different route and use the reverse like Matthias was talking about use the reverse of the product property log base 4 of what would we do with the 2 and the 32 <coughs> okay, so oh, yeah. 2 times 2 to the 5th, which is 2 to the 6th, I'm going to just go ahead and, that's 64, or 2 times 32 is 64, all right? Now, can you write 64 as a power of 4? What is it? 4 to the... So what's this equal, Mike? 3. All right. Now, we could have done the 1 half. We'd had to figure out 4 to the 2 and a half power, or 5 as power is 32, if we want to keep on that direction. All right. Is that clear, guys? Any questions on this? Okay. Okay. 